FL Studio may seem like a daunting program at first, but with a little bit of experience and the right guidance, you too can fly through the program effortlessly. I will walk you through each section of the doll as if it was your first time opening up the program, and how to streamline your creative process through each step of making a song, from creating an idea, arranging that idea, and mixing the final song. So when you first open up FL Studio, it should look something like this. The first thing I want to talk about is this nice little browser here on the left. Here is where you're going to store all your favorite samples for your songs, but first, you have to actually link one of your folders to it. I suggest going into your computer's document folder and making a folder called samples. Now to route that folder to actually show up in our browser here, you go up to this options tab here, click file settings, and click on any of these empty folders here. Here you can route all your folders to show up in our nice browser tab here on the left. Okay, now we got our sample folder ready and we can actually begin to make a song. I typically start with my melodic layers, so let's pull up a free plugin called Flex that comes included with FL Studio. You can find a bunch of great free plugins out there on the internet and I have a video dedicated to showing off some of my favorite ones here on this channel. But for now, we can stick with Flex since I do think it is a great starting point. Here you can click the little plus sign here on the channel rack, go into more plugins, and search up Flex. If you end up becoming a huge fan of any of the plugins you download, you can always click this little star on the left, and now that plugin you favorited will pop up in that initial box here. Now in Flex, you can download some of these free preset packs here and pick any sound you like. Now to make your melody, you first have to open up the piano roll. Most of your time will probably be spent here, so getting used to the shortcut here is incredibly important. To open up the piano roll, all you have to do is right click the flex plugin here and click piano roll. Now very simply you can left click to create a note and right click to delete it. You can then click control and drag to highlight specific notes. You can pull on the ends of notes here to extend them or shorten them. While the notes are selected you can hold shift and use the arrow keys to shift your notes up or down the piano roll. You can also hold shift and left click to drag around a duplicate of whatever you have selected. One of the most important shortcuts in FL Studio is control B. This will duplicate whatever you have selected sequentially, which basically just means it will duplicate right to the end of whatever you currently have selected. This is an important one because copy and paste function in FL Studio will kind of just paste things randomly and you end up having to manually drag things into place this way, which is very inefficient. So we have our simple chord progression here and I want to double it one more time so that it is a full eight bar loop. And all I have to do to do that is use control B and we now have our eight bar loop. Now we have our example melody here. Let's move on to the drums. Go into your folder that we made earlier and find some drum samples that you like. Once you have ones that you think will work with your song, you can drag and drop them right into our channel rack here. And now we're ready to start programming our drums. The drum sequencer in FL Studio is super simple to use. All you have to do is click on these little bars here and find a groove that you like. If you want to edit things with a bit more detail, you can once again right click the sample and open up the piano roll and edit things in there. With the piano roll open, you can select your grid size in this top left bar here. This really comes in handy when you're programming, let's say, your hi-hats, so you can create some more interesting rhythms in your drums. As you change your grid size, you can use the shortcut Shift D to shorten your notes to the exact length of the grid that you now have selected. A useful feature if you're just going for a simple hi-hat rhythm is to right click the hi-hat sample and click fill each two steps. This will give you a quick and easy quarter note rhythm without having to click every single note in. Another shortcut that can really save you a ton of time in FL Studio is Control L. Instead of having to manually go through and stretch all these notes out to connect with one another, I can very simply just click Control A, which will select all the notes here, and then Control L, which will connect them all. Before we go any further, I want to talk about organization. A huge part of creating workflow in any DAW you have is having some form of organization to how you actually order your tracks on your mixer. This is so you're not helplessly looking for your kick or snare because you have them in different places for every single project. It may take some time to find an order that you prefer, but keep this in mind when you start getting more comfortable with the program. All right, now we have the foundation to your song, but before we do anything else, we should route these sounds onto our mixer. For the purpose of this video, you can route these simply from one to how however many tracks you have in the song. For our example here, it's one through six. Now we have our sounds going through the mixer. I personally like to structure my songs before going into the mixing phase. This is so I can get a feel and flow of the song before processing anything. So let me show y'all how to use the timeline as efficiently as possible. The first thing you wanna do is right click the pattern block we created our idea in. When you right click it, you'll see a bunch of options pop up, but the one we're focusing on right now is split by channel. This is just gonna send each layer we made onto its own pattern block so we can organize them separately as we see fit. Now you will see everything split accordingly on this left bar here. All you have to do is click the top block here, hold down shift and click the bottom block, which should select all of the layers we have and drag them onto our playlist. If you wanna zoom in and out of your timeline, you have to click the control button and then use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. You can also use the scroll wheel, of course, 
bars to move up and down the timeline. You can also hold shift and drag here at this top bar to loop a particular section. A method a lot of producers use when organizing their songs is to just copy and paste what we have here a bunch of times using control B and then start removing things to create your intro, verses, and chorus sections. I have an entire video dedicated to structuring out your songs if you want some more in-depth explanation about the topic, but for now, we can just stick with a simple intro without the drums and a chorus section where all our elements will play. I do also suggest keeping your timeline organized since it can be very easy for things to get messy if you're not careful. The way I like to do it is to have all my instruments at the top, my bass layer underneath that, all my drums underneath the bass, and if I use any effects, those will go under the drums just to keep things nice nice and tidy. But as you can see in my project, my bass is all the way at the bottom. You can very easily fix that by hovering over its track number, holding shift, and scrolling to push it up right next to my melodic layer. An important thing to know about FL Studio is that all of these blocks are linked together. So if you change the chord progression on one block, it will also change on any other blocks you have placed on the timeline. A very useful feature for creating variations in your song is to right click the block and select Make Unique. This will allow you to create any variation you want without affecting the rest of your song. And that just about covers every important tip I have when it comes to the song's timeline. Now we can move on to the mixer. To apply any effects onto a specific sound, all you have to do is click the track they are routed to and here with these little slots you can apply whatever plugin you see fit let's say you want to bring the volume down on all your drums without having to manually tweak each fader all you have to do is click control and drag your mouse over all your drum tracks here this will select them all and you can pull down all the faders now at equal degrees you can also use this if you want to color code specific parts of your mix like let's say you want your drums to be blue with all your drums still selected you can now right click any of these tracks and click change color here in the mixer things are pretty self-explanatory you have your pan knob and your volume fader. If you want to solo a sound, all you have to do is right click the green button here and then right click again to undo it. And if you want to mute the sound, you can left click the green button to mute and left click again to unmute. This same idea also applies to the green buttons on the channel rack and the timeline. I do want to talk about automation a bit since it is probably the trickiest part about FL Studio. I'll be using the wet knob on our reverb here as an example. Let's say I want to ramp up the wet knob on the reverb right before the chorus comes in. I right click here to create a new point and drag it up. Upwards. But now we have this weird ramp down going into the chorus, so let's fix that. All we have to do is to create a point somewhere over here and drag it onto the fifth bar here. But as you can see, it is not the same value as our original point. To fix that, we can go back to our initial point at the start of the automation block, right click it, and click copy value. And now paste it onto our new point. Now we have that straight line we were looking for. A big part of automating an FL Studio is really going to come down to this right here, which is just copying and pasting the values around. But let's say I want to do that same effect somewhere over here. Instead of having to manually do it all over again and copy values, I can very simply use the slice tool, cut off this little ramp up right here, and just move it over here again. Similar to how playlist blocks work though, if I change the automation here, it will also change the ones from earlier. So if I do want to tweak this one separately, I will once again have to click make unique, and now I can tweak this one freely without affecting the other. But now let's say you don't want to automate this anymore, let's delete it. If you go to tweak the setting you automated after deleting the automation block, it will continue to reset to the initial automation level. FL Studio has remembered that you automated it and won't let you tweak it further since it still thinks you have it automated. So to fix that, all you have to do is go back into your browser from earlier, go into current project, go into initialize controls, and you will see your automation link here. If you right click this and delete events, you once again regain control from FL Studio's evil automation mind. Being efficient in your DAW is really an important step to creating music more seamlessly so you can stop spending so much time problem solving weird technical problems and start putting that focus towards the actual music side of things. I hope this video was helpful y'all. If you have any questions or need more clarification on a topic, please feel free to leave a comment. And if I forgot to mention anything important, please yell at me down below. I hope this video was helpful y'all. Thank you for watching and I hope to see y'all in the next one.